Hello everyone and welcome to this three part series covering tab targeting. Tab targeting is the act of hitting the tab key on your keyboard to select targets and to cycle between valid targets. Now there are loads of ways of doing a tab targeting system and the many ways you want to interpret which target you want to, uh, to next target next. So uh, what we're going to be doing in this one is looking at distance. Okay, so we're going by distance to the player. So in this first episode, we're going to start off by creating the targeting system. So when we hit tab, we select the closest actor. So let's get started. So to get started with our tab targeting system, um, I'm in the third person template and we need to set up some target dummies that we can test this on. So let's create our target dummies. So I'm going to go into my blueprint class. There's a character class here and we're going to do a target dummy and open it up and I'm just going to set the mesh on here and that's literally it. I'm not going to do anything else on it um, at least just yet we'll just use this yellow one I like to use this for target dummies and take it around the face right away okay so once we've got that let's just place a couple of those into our scene so we can use it for testing purposes turn around so you can see his beautiful little face and Make another one here. Let's space them apart for testing purposes so you can test like distance checks and things like that. That'll work quite well, like that. Okay. Uh, okay, so we've got that now set up. Next thing we'll do is uh, set up our player controller. So let's create a custom player controller. If you haven't really got one already, you go to create a new blueprint class and you choose a new player controller here. Um, if you're starting a brand new project, you won't have one by custom, one at least that you can use. So just create one here. So we click player controller, and we'll do my player controller, and open this up. And in here, we are going to uh, add on our event graph here a tab key input. Tab key. And there's our tab. Now, before we go any further, I want to make sure we set our game to use this controller. So let's compile that and go into our game mode. Now, if you're using a third person template, you will find this in the third person folder in Blueprints, and it's there third person game mode. You can open this up, and in here you will see player controller class, and here you can change it to your custom controller. And we're doing that because we are putting our own custom code on it. Therefore, we are extending it to our custom one. And that's what we have to really worry about here. So uh, when I tab, I want to basically get all the actors within a certain range of my character. Now, if you're doing a, quite a large map, this could be quite troublesome because we don't want to just grab every single actor and then check out who, who is closest. So what we can do is spawn another actor to handle that for us. And just capture those sort of like a net so we're going to create a new actor i'll put in this same over here within class actor and we'll call this one the targeting net and open this up here inside our net we need a collision sphere this will be acting as our net so do collision sphere collision and I set the sphere radius here to basically the range that I want it to be able to check for um, a target. So I'm going to put in a radius of, let's say, 1500. Okay, so fairly big. Yeah. Maybe, maybe too big, but you can tweak that to whatever size you wish. Okay. Um, so we've got targeting net set up. Next, we're going to do is go to our event graph. And in here, we need to check and grab hold of all the actors that we've got inside of our net. So we can make a custom event in here called get targeting, uh, sorry, get targets in range. And in fact, actually, I want to make this a uh, function. So if right click on this and convert event to function. Okay, and it'll now appear down here in the functions list here. Okay, um, so inside I get targets in range here. We're going to drag out our sphere collision. And in here, we're going to get overlapping 
actors. And this is going to be all of our possible actors that we may want. So we're going to do actors. Uh, or actor, rather. Actor. And with overlapping actors now appearing here. So obviously this could be quite a large list. We don't want to maybe collect every single thing. Um, so you may want to filter that down further. So for example, maybe only capturing like um, things in combat. So you might want to just do pawns maybe. Um, but whatever you pick is up to you. Um, but pawns should be a good one to start off with. Now overlapping actors still return as just actors array. So don't worry about that. That's all we need to worry about here's this. Okay, so we need to filter out which ones we can actually target because we're not going to want to target everyone uh, for combat. So we're going to create an interface to handle this. Then we go to blueprints, blueprint interface, and do I targeting interface. And open it up. And in here, we're going to have a uh, function called is targetable and this is going to have an output and this output will be um boolean or uh is uh other to uh is targetable okay so if it's true it means we can select it for combat in fact actually let's just rename this one or is combat targetable Okay, so you may, may want to use this outside of combat too, in case you want a different function to handle that. Okay, so there we go. We've got this in here. Uh, so let's go to our target dummy and implement that interface. So to do that, we go over to our class settings. Interfaces are over here on the right-hand side. We click Add and search for the uh, targeting interface that we just made. And it's been successfully done. You should see down here in interfaces, the function we just designed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so on target dummy, if we click on is ta combat target tool, double click on it, and we're going to tick this one. So there may be some things that we want to be targeted, but not during combat. In which case, we just go in and un and untick it for that case. This could be things like NPCs that you want maybe want to target. Okay. Uh, so we're done here, we'll close that and return back to our targeting net. So once we get overla overlapping actors, there in the end, uh, we're going to do a for each loop and go through each one of them. And as we go through each one of them, we are checking to see if they implement the interface. Does implement interface. Um, actually, save as a step, we can actually just call that interface called there. So we're going to do is combat targetable. So if it doesn't have the interface, this will return false because it's false by default. If it does have it, it could be true or false, and that's where we're filtering here. So we'll put a branch in and say is targetable. Yep. Um, we want to make that the current target that comes out or a possible target in the target list. So let's go to our local variables here and make a new local variable called um, targets in range. And that'd be an array of actors. We're basically slimming this array down into a smaller array, which is this one here. So these are the ones that we can target. Um, we get that, add unique, which only want one version of that character in there and it goes like so <clears throat> okay excellent right so now we've done that on the completed here we're going to do a return node and going to drag that into there and plug in targets in range and add it as a pin there and we'll output it as targets compile and save that so let's recap what's going on here. When we get targets in range, this function call, we're going to grab hold of the sphere, get all the overlapping pawns within range of that sphere. And for each one of them, we're going to go through and check their interface targets if they are 
combat targetable. If I don't have the interface or it isn't set to true, it will return false and do nothing. If it is targetable, then it's going to be added to the targets in range array, which we're then outputting over here to be sorted out further down the line. So let's hit compile and save here. And now there will be more we come back to later on in here. Um, but for now, that is all we need. Okay, so let's go to my player controller here. And on tab press here, we're going to do spawn actor from class. And we're going to put in the targeting net. Now, the spawn transform, it will be where the player currently is. So let's get the controlled pawn for this controller. And then from there, we're going to get transform and plug that into here. On collision handling override, because this is quite important, we do want to make sure this is always going to spawn, just ignore all collisions. It spawns. Then on return value here, we're going to call that function we just made. So get targets in range. And you can see here it is now outputting the target list. So the next job is we need to filter through this list to find the closest target. So let's go ahead and create a function to handle that. Get closest target. Now this thing will need to have an array of targets first of all to get started. So um, actually I'm going to change it from closest target to closest actor. because That's more accurate what we're using and we can use it later on for other things too. So this needs an array fed into it. So let's make an array of actors as the input here. Uh, actor array. Okay, so from this at closest actor, we're going to drag this out and do a for each loop. Log that in. And then for each one, we need to keep track of who's the closest and what is their closest distance. So we go to local variables, add two local variables to this. The first one is going to be closest actor. So we know who is closest. It'll be an actor reference. And we also want the closest distance. And that'd be a float. Now what's quite important here is you make sure the closest distance default value here is greater than the range of your thing. Okay, so if it's, in my case it's 1500 in range. So I'm gonna just up it just a little bit to make it sure I don't mess that up. So it'd be 2000 here. We then want to get a distance between this actor and the controlled pawn. So we can drag this from here and you can do get distance two. And the other actor could be get controlled pawn. Like so. And the return value here, we're going to check to see if it's less than the closest distance. And this will go into a branch. If it is closer, that means I've got a new distance to record and a new closest actor. So let's record the closest distance now. So set that under true here. And the closest distance is going to come from this get distance to. And we also want to record the closest actor. So let's drag that out and plug that in to there. Then once it's finished going for all of them in the completed branch down here, we do a return node to return the results, the closest actor and closest distance. Get, plug that in, get, plug in distance as well. And we'll just rename these so they can look a bit better. Uh, chosen actor, oh, uh, uh, closest. And we'll do this one as distance. There you go. Okay, so over here we're going through each and every single actor, getting a distance between that actor and our controlled pawn. And if it's less than the closest distance of 2500, uh, which is a starting point, then it will make this the new closest distance. 
and make this actor the closest actor. It's going to keep doing that, go through each one in that list until it's done. And when it's done, we should have the closest actor and their distance. Let's go back to the event graph and drag in get closest actor and hook up our targets into the actor pin here. So we now have got down to our final closest actor here, which is the one that we want to target. So for this to work, we can make another function called target actor. And in here, we want to have an input for which actor we want to target. So actor, single variable this time, not only the array. And in this singular variable, we are going to um, store this as a value. So we'll promote that to a variable. And go current target. Like so. Um, and then I want to spawn a targeter so I can see which one I'm targeting. So this could be like a UI sort of thing um, or whatever you want. For now, we'll do a debug thing and we'll make it look prettier later. So we create a blueprint class actor and we'll call this one the targeter. And in here, I'm just going to give this an arrow and make the arrow point down. And move it up in the air. So it's almost like it's pointing down on top of the one that's been selected. Okay, that's all we're doing here. Oh, and make sure it's hidden in game is turned off. So hidden game, turn off. Okay, so there's our targeter. Um, so we go back to the player controller here. And the target actor, we're going to do spawn actor from class. And we're going to choose the targeter. And we want to spawn him at the same location as our current target. So get current target here, get actor transform, and plug that into the spawn transform there. And we'll make sure this always spawns regardless. So always spawn. And we also want to make sure that we promote that to a, ver uh, a variable so we can clear it later on. With targeter. I then want to attach it to whoever the current target is. Let's take the return value from here and do attach actor to actor. And the parent actor here is going to be our current target. File, save. So that's going to be target actor. So it's going to go through, store it as a variable, get its location, spawn a target on above its head and then promote that to a variable and attach it to the player character. Oh, one thing to note, you want to keep uh, change the location rule here from keep relative to keep world. Um, the rest, do keep world as well, be fine. Okay. Right, so next, we're going to go into the creating another function called clear target. So go in here, clear target. And clear target is a lot simpler. All you're doing in here is taking the current target variable and setting it to nothing, clears it, and the targeter, you know, drag that out and right click on it, convert to validate to get. The reason why we want to do that is we don't want to try and destroy something that doesn't already exist if we can help it. So this just checks to make sure it actually exists before we destroy it. Speaking of which, we just drag from there to destroy actor. Okay, and that's clear target done. So let's now go back to our event graph. And once we've got the closest actor here, we're going to take out clear target first and put that in there. We're then going to do target actor and plug in the chosen closest actor into our target actor here. Compile and save. Okay, so let's take a look at that in game and see how that works. So push play. If I hit tab, you see the arrow is now set to this one. Okay. If I go over here and hit tab, it'll pick this one. Over here, pick this one. Now currently you can see is if I go over here, it'll pick the closest one. But if I hit tab again, it won't go anywhere else. It will stay on the closest one. That's what we'll do next time. And there we have it. We now can select the closest actor in our targeting range. However, we can't cycle through our valid targets just yet.
So in the next episode, we're going to set up the ability to cycle between different targets that are valid and inside our range. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lely, where all my videos are available early for all Patreon members. Thank you to all my Patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. And if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. It really does help. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone. Thank you.